We're going right. to. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Thanks for joining. Thanks for joining. People are piling in. Let's give them some time. We have done a minute or two early. It's always good to be early. Ahead I was, of the, I was told that early is on time, on time is late. So, exactly. I like that. We're live already? We are live. We are live broadcasting and recording. Uh, we will give it another we'll give it another minute or two to like 11.02 for people to hop in. So far, the numbers are, are piling up. We can see the numbers on the right side. Oh, nice. Hi, everybody. Good morning. You can run a commercial in the meantime. <laughs> yeah. Geico can save you 15%. No, they're not uh, not, not a sponsor of this event. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's a nice yeah. weather, you know? By you? Very nice weather, nice, nice and bright sun. I like that. People are piling in very, very nicely. Very beautiful, healthy attendance so far. Two minutes. Two minutes till 11.02, and then we'll jump right into the content that everyone is so much wanting to hear about, about cybersecurity and proper protection. I feel like we just spoke. Is it me or is it? I feel like we just literally just spoke. <laughs> no, I know. 100%. 100%. Yeah, we had a little bit of a uh, review yes, prior this to this uh, webinar to make sure that we're giving you the best content, making it worth your while. We know that it's uh, 11 o'clock on a Wednesday and um, it's difficult. You know, everybody joined in the morning prime hours. So. 100%. The AM hours are very important to everyone, I believe, and we want to make sure to be the most productive for you. And we think, now we think, in our humble opinion, but it's the fact that the information that we're going to bring to you today is very vital for every single person, no matter if you're a big business, a medium-sized business, or a real small business, or an everyday individual or an employee. The awareness and the lack of information that people don't have in cybersecurity and cyber threats that we're facing is unbelievable. And I don't expect you to know it, but the professionals that you trust and the people that are around you to provide you with certain services are, it's their legal duty, in my opinion, to yeah, properly to you and, and make you aware of what's going on. And just in the light of recent events, you're jumping um, into you're getting you're getting you're getting ahead of yourself. Right? You're getting, you're getting ahead of yourself. Yes, we're not starting. 11, oh, 11.02. All right, okay, so let's jump right into it then. Good morning, my name is Chaim Berkovic from Skyscraper Insurance Services, and I have here today Yidi Lemmer joining us this morning. Exactly, an IT veteran, two decades in the industry, has seen it all going it from back in the school old days to these days, um, cyber risk and cyber threats and is here to shed some light on the most recent events and the recent threats that we've all been facing. And I as well from the other side of the aisle, in terms of risk management, seeing what type of exposures are out there, and what companies have suffered and literally destroyed them or almost destroyed them from cyber threats and cyber breaches and cyber crime and all these cyber criminals and scammers, hackers, everything that's going out these days. Yeah, Chaim, what, what, are the, what are the statistics for a business that experienced a cyber breach? Uh, what are the chances of survival? So basically, it's it's really rough because they the statistics show that 60 or now we even went up the numbers more closer to the 70 percent of companies that suffer a cyber attack will shut their doors. That's for small business, and small business is a huge target in cyber crime. It's not just the big fish out there that are suffering. A lot of small businesses that are suffering a cyber attack and they don't have the proper protection in place will most likely shut the doors and it's very, very sad because you have worked your whole life out there and you wanna make sure that you're properly protected and you purchase every type of protection and coverage out there to ensure you for fire and like 
business as two business owners over here, like we know what's involved in starting a business, and creating a business, or giving it 110 percent that no employee will ever give um, to build that business from the ground up, and to see all that or, or risk all that. Uh, or skip all that. And even one of the most valuable parts of our companies are our people, our employees, and properly protecting them or, hand, or them having suffering or your clients having suffering from a cyber attack is really, really sad. You don't want to have this uh, chain of events going through your, your you, nobody wants to experience it. And what we want to accomplish today is raise awareness and just give you the right perspective to take away in this 45 minutes what to bring you up the steep speed and give you a briefing where we're up to um, and where we hold right now, what era of cyber we're standing and what you should be on the lookout for. And yep. uh, what TV likes to say, there's two tar pipe types of things involved as a company owner or an individual that you need to make sure you have, whether on your personal phone with your apps and where everything you manage and whether as a company. There's two things, very important things that we're going to cover today. Remember, there's... Ensuring, well, the, the, the theme the theme of today's event is ensuring and insuring. Uh, it's, a, it's a play on words, and you've seen a lot of it in all the reminders. But it's basically working proactively to ensure that you're doing everything you can uh, to protect yourself. Absolutely, absolutely. That's that, that's great, Chaim. That's great. Uh, and then, of course, of course, being there when something happens and, and having the, the, the proper response, having the team to, to back you up, having the resources and, of course, money, because uh, that's uh, often required in a cyber attack um, to, to, to help make things right again. And that's where Chaim comes into with, with his expertise and his team and his company. Uh, and that's the services he's been selling and providing to his clients. Uh, and then we at Cap you Connect, we're on the proactive side of things. We're... We try to do everything we can to, to prevent an emergency, to prevent an outage, to prevent a, a cyber breach, and to prevent an attack. That's my business model. That's my model in life. Also, I try to be proactive and try to prevent a disaster as opposed to having to react to one. Nobody likes Monday morning emergencies. Nobody likes any kind of emergencies. So that's 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 my model. Exactly. So basically, like Yidi just said, it's being proactive to prevent and put in measures and processes and procedures into place to be proactive as a company and then reactive, got to a bit when the unwanted does, does hit, you should have a full crisis management in place that properly takes care of it. And I just want to give you like a little briefing as we're all experiencing right now. Um, people just got aware, hey, big tech is in charge and, and they have all my privacy, my information. Good morning, wake up, smell the coffee, because that's a reality that it's developing over the last few years. I myself, as a business owner, we purchase very expensive software to keep our clients' data. The size of a cyber liability plan and IT and everything that we have going on, our lawyers read through the contracts and make sure that the data that we have is protected and we own the data. They don't sell the data further for big tech companies like Google and all these other um, platforms out there. When you see sometimes an app, a CRM that you use, Salesforce, whatever it is that you're using, sometimes you see it for very cheap, and sometimes even it's not cheap, you don't know these small words where they say about keeping the data and what they're doing with the data. Nobody was aware of that. Now, all, all of a sudden, I'm gonna delete this app from my phone and that from my phone, you're too late. The data's everything. All these big companies, and everybody that's succeeding out there is based on accurate data. And all they've been doing till now is collecting data and they plan to do more. Data, it's called. And, and the, the, most recent one, <clears throat> the most recent thing to bring to most people's attention is the whole WhatsApp situation on Facebook. People are getting all freaked out. People are leaving WhatsApp faster than leaving New York. Uh, and, uh, and um, you know, and. But, paranoia of not knowing and this shows how the lack of, of knowledge and the ignorance that day-to-day -day people have when it comes to cybersecurity and 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 properly protecting your data and and properly having measures in place so when something does happen they should be properly protected so just the point what i wanted to use here is basically that data is what feeds our country data is what feeds our businesses and data is what's the future and holds like you see now with tesla tesla reached to be the biggest companies when a few months ago they have, they have suffered the biggest um, loss as a corporate company. And I'm using them as an example because 
Tesla, I'm not, I'm not a, a full-time trader, but as a hobby, I like to trade. It's probably the best stock that I own and the most performing and the best stock that I, that I, that I ever experienced as trading. And the reason that is because in the next 10 years, everything will probably be autonomous, technology cars, everything is data, and everything is based on data. And you can see that the data is what feeds every single business, even your local business. If you have the correct data, if you know when to reach out or how to reach out, if you monitor case studies, all the data is what your business is up to. So as a small business, of course, and professionalized, I'm not talking about a local bakery, which everybody should be protected. It's very cheap to have it if, 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 if you're less of a bullseye for a cyber criminal. But in terms of anybody that's relying on the data and the collecting clients data and all these type of stuff, it's literally be, it, it's a crime walking around without proper protection, coverages, and measures in place because it's not just the neighbor or somebody down the block that suffers from cyber crimes. You are the one that can be the next target. And most likely the way things are going, as we are sitting now in the morning and 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 trying to build our businesses and do better and, and prepare for 2021, our full business plan, there are cyber criminals sitting in their side, the same motivated, waking up in the morning, and making uh-huh. their money this way. And I think um, Yidi as per, um, has to present for us a power presentation to walk us through a little bit more about what is going on over here. He prepared a beautiful presentation, which you'll pull up on the screen over here and show for all of you guys, the whole audience, to walk you through a little bit about what, when, and where, how cybercrime developed and how it's going and um, what we can do as professionals and responsible business owners to put things into place and into perspective and know how to reach out to your professionals to make sure that things are um, properly aligned and adequate in terms of coverage, service, quality, and uh, protection. Yeah, very well said. Thank you, Chaim. I appreciate that. Uh, I touched on a lot of different points over there. And uh, and there's lots to discuss, and we'll try to cover the most important things I'll jump into the PowerPoint that appeared over here. I think it's very powerful. And if we have more time, we will definitely circle around to others. Okay, so just give me one second. Let me share my screen. And while you're pulling it up, I want to point out that 2020 has been a very tough year. But in the lightning of this tough year, this has made us so much grow because companies who are facing the biggest threats of their experience. Business owners were like at a gunpoint at certain points and people were forced either to be called themselves a victim, which you're 100% right, they're a victim. And unfortunately, a lot of people literally did suffer and they couldn't do anything because they were forced because of government. But in every dark situation, there's a positive part. And some people, when they hit the most darkest days, they took that desperate need to develop things and made them move on 10 years faster than things that they wouldn't have done or pushed themselves because they weren't being forced to do it. So their biggest problem turned out in their greatest solution because companies were relying on doing things like they would never thought they will do before or things that were proposed to them in the, in, in the past, but they weren't thinking of doing it because which normal person will do that? But now that they were almost closing doors, they were forced to hire people to work from home or do certain things based on technology and based on data and based on moving along on efficiency and on stronger, new crazy ideas in terms of platforms and and made us move and give us the perspective in business to be a couple of years ahead than as average year after year goes, the new developments, even on the on the, on the Google platforms and everything, they start every app, every company, Zoom, everybody released new updates all of a sudden. Everybody's releasing this update and this update. Google had an email and everything about yeah. yeah. because it was um, transforming from manual old school labor into the computers, robotic, and data analysts to do the work for us. So everybody that was based on data, their stacks was going skyrocketing high. And, and 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 getting things done accordingly. Yeah, absolutely. Um, now, what, one of my favorite uh, things about 2020 is that uh, people were very locked into the idea of that they need them, their employees must be in their office. Their employees must be in, in arm's length. Otherwise, my company is different, and my people are different, and just the things that we do need to be done you know, in-house and can never 
be working from, you know, and, and that, that meant having expensive offices. I know that my clients are in New York City. Uh, so it meant having expensive offices. It meant having uh, paying expensive payrolls because uh, personnel um, employees in New York City is, is very expensive uh, for relatively low talent. So, you know, people now saw that they're able to continue. Again, I just got a message here. Um, somebody told me, a few people tell me that they can, they're trying to log in and they say that it's not working. I just want to make sure the you see the audience over there. You have, you have the, um, I see the numbers. I see the numbers going up. Absolutely. People are still joining. People are still joining. People are fine. Uh, if you can hear us, uh, okay, and see us, okay, you want to drop me a message in the chat, kind of give us feedback. Otherwise, I think we're, you know, I think we're, we're good. Oh, okay. So no problem. So I had someone um over here taking my messages, and he told me he came in, let me know that um that um they were trying to. So I, I'm glad that let's continue. You were saying about 2020, and also one more thing that 2020 has been a big um bummer for cyber criminals because of so many companies that were relying to work from office and they weren't set up with proper protection and measures for employees to work from home so all of a sudden they evacuated the offices and everybody was working from home locked into their private servers private wi-fis and these hackers were getting through to the biggest and strongest companies because they had innocent great employees working from their comfort of their home locked yeah. in in their pajamas, working, yeah. getting work done in such a in such a difficult time, and at the same time, these people weren't sleeping as well. They were looking up these professionals and logging into the biggest and strongest companies and stealing all their data, and making a, a big party out of it on on on, on <coughs> in the unfortunate situations they expense. Yeah. So, so 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 many. <laughs> working from home certain things where we're facing so much more threats as a company that you need to eliminate threats and risk management is 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 brought to light right now after all these chain of events that 2020 has thrown us around and we managed after all to survive and i will share after this proud presentation or while we'll go through some real life stories that we have seen with companies suffering big, big cyber attacks and how their protection and their professionals and their coverage and their insurance was there to help them um, regain full consciousness and be back up and running like a company and even stronger and better. And I'll explain why um, throughout this um, crisis. So Yidi, let's start with your presentation. And, um, let's go on. Jump right into the presentation. And we'll take it from there. All right. Your audio, your so, audio. Hang on a second. Fix your audio. Audio is copy. How's it now? Now it's much better. Now it's much better. Okay, good. The guys that were trying to log in, they logged in successfully. So, hi. Hey, All right. Thank you. How's it, How's it better? We have a great presentation coming up okay. now. All right. So, I'd like to share the state of the cyber landscape today. The audio is back off. For some reason, there's an issue with the audio. All right, all right. I'd like to share the state of the cyber, cyber landscape today. Cybercrime is up 600%. That's terrible. That's really bad. Um, Somebody's that hacking. That is really bad. How's it now? That was better. So, so it's hanging. Um, hmm. That's terrible. That is terrible. Good. All right, I'll continue. Give me some feedback. Let me know how things are going. All right, so one second, Let's share it again. So the state of cyber landscape today: cybercrime is up 600% due to COVID-19, due to the COVID-19 pandemic, um, and that's largely because of the work from home. Based on what Khan was saying before as well, uh, there's a large uptick in sophisticated phishing emails posing as the World Health Organization, as the CDC, as the SBA, and PPP loans. They're taking advantage of all these weaknesses and all these weak spots of, of people, um, and they're really hitting them hard. 
that hackers attack every 39 seconds on average. It's about a little over 2,200 times a day, according to the University of Maryland. And 56% of Americans don't know what steps to take in the event of a breach. And that's why we have time here today. Time is really gonna, gonna drive it home a little later uh, during this presentation. Correct. So I want to give a quick overview of the sophistication and the proliferation of the cybercrime business. And when I say cybercrime business, it means, I mean the cybercrime business. These are not just people here that want to wreck up your day. They're here because they're here to make money. The cybercrime is a business. Let me kind of walk you through a little bit of the evolution of crime, of where crime came from, what happened. Now, crime way back when in the olden days, when, when people used to refer to crime, they used to think of of a guy you know, used to come with a gun or a knife and come up behind you and, and just, you know, you know stick That's him cool. up and, you know, fork over your money and jewelry, whatever you got uh, on you, and, and he would score. And that's, you know, that was the long and short of the crime. Um, but it was really on a one-on-one on -one basis. There's a lot of risk involved for both. Uh, then they got smarter and evolved, and they, they started hitting trains. And trains at a single point with, with multiple people also going from town to town, so they're able to to monetize that situation. It, it was a good strategy, so they're able to go one one to many. Today, with cybercrime, these people are sitting on the on their couches in their home. I don't know where they're sitting. Anyway, they're, they're sitting in some basement, cooped up in the basement, and they're hitting five, six, hundred, a thousand people at a time, and the and and they're making money from each one of them. They're sticking up each one of them. Um, and, and they're holding them ransom and making that money. That, that's what's happening today with cybercrime. The criminal, the, the, what, what happens with, with this, all this information that people, that these hackers acquire, they go and they sell it on the black market, or, or also known as the dark web. Credit cards, the credit card details are sold for about, from ranging between $2 and $90 a piece. iTunes accounts are sold for about $8 a piece. And this is real currency, this is real money. Physical credit cards can be purchased for $190 a piece. Credit card cloning machines can be sold, can be purchased for about two, two to $300 a piece. You can even purchase a fake ATM machine, a, a machine that you can go and put outside in front of your home or in front of your business. I mean, not you, but you know, hackers. Um, and it does not, obviously does not dispense any money. It just grabs all that information from the consumer, from the end user, and that can be purchased for like $35,000. And again, this is a business. You know, anyone can easily buy and they can receive training and tools and services for, for committing fraud, hacking systems, buying stolen credit cards and whatnot. The average cost of recovering or, or damage of, of a single um, lost record is about $141, but that does not include, it doesn't take into account uh, reputable rep, 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 damage. It doesn't take into account yeah, loss of clients. It doesn't take care of class action lawsuits and individual lawsuits. It does not take into account legal fees to handle the breach. It doesn't take into account compliance lawsuits, you know, for not being compliant. A lot of times people get breached and that exposes them that they didn't do what they needed to do to be compliant to begin with. That's what opened them up. That's what opened them up for a breach to begin with. Uh, replacing the data. Sometimes it's, you can recover the data. Other times you got to recreate the data from scratch, uh, and that costs a lot of money and a lot of time. Downtime and loss of productivity, and then time required to re-enter data, which is kind of you know replacement of data that I mentioned before. Now, the mindset with a lot of people is, yeah, we're small, no one's interested in me. You know, nobody want, nobody's going to bother hacking me anyway. Like, what do I have? That you're you're wrong. You're wrong. The, the statistics are unfortunately that one in five small businesses fall victim to cybercrime each year, and that number is growing. And this this is the National Cybersecurity Alliance. Um, the small businesses are also low-hanging fruit because they don't believe that they're their target and therefore have very loose or no security systems in place. And then half of all cyber attacks are aimed at small to medium sized businesses, which is another thing, you know, kind of reiterating what Khan said earlier. Now, you may, you may be thinking to yourself, like well, those numbers that I just I just uh, shared are staggering numbers. I should be hearing about it more. I mean, people should be. We should be hearing about these cyber breaches more if that's really the case. Now, anybody reading the news or listening to the news, unfortunately, it's, it happens about once a week, once in two weeks, a, a really newsworthy breach happens. It can be anywhere from as recent as a SolarWinds hack that hacked the US government 
the highest level of U.S. government nu nuclear facilities got hacked, and, and the highest levels of Microsoft got hacked. This was just uh, two weeks ago. Um, and then uh, it, it goes down to a very low level on to everyone's uh, small businesses. But the reason why you're not hearing more about it is because it's extremely embarrassing to admit that you got hacked. Uh, also, this. I want to I want to make a little bit of, um um stop over here and elaborate a little bit more and also address what you mentioned earlier. I took a note to properly respond that I should explain what the response means. So exactly, sure. cyber crime it, it's small. You don't hear about it every single day locally because people are simply embarrassed. And you know what? Some people should be embarrassed and some not. And I'll explain the difference why. Because just like we started off the conversation by there is a pre um, proactive measures and reactive measures, offense and defense. If you do everything in your power, you hire the right processes and procedures, the right companies to properly protect your data. And then you have a good cyber protection program with crisis management in place. Then there's nothing to be ashamed of. If not, then you were waiting for this to happen because it does happen. So that's why people, are running around, they don't know who to call, because simply when there's a fire, you know to extinguish the fire. In situations like this, you're so vulnerable because you don't know where to start. And you're not an expert. And even the experts are sometimes struggling to wrap around how, where was the breach to eliminate the hack. Now, the biggest companies, the government accounts, the most strongest out there got hacked already. There's nothing to be ashamed of. What people will be watching, what clients will be watching, and for yourself, for your own peace of mind, what is important is the proper response. So besides of the financial loss, where you need coverage to have everything recovered, the time that you couldn't sell on your online platform, or your business was interrupted, the interruption coverage, that's covered under insurance. The fact that you suffered a significant loss, that's covered. The ransom is covered. But the part what you need to make sure that your plan has is also crisis management, negotiating the ransom. Let's say we have ex-military personnel that comes in, let's say NSA professionals, that will negotiate the threat, make sure that the data is scrubbed, there's proof that the evidence has been scrubbed over the dark web, they have ways, forensics experts that will do that. The first thing is a legal representation. You need to notify your clients. Yes, I was hacked. This is our law firm representing us. If you have damages, everything resulting of our hack, we're here to take care of you. You are our clients. We we'll care about you. You know how much trust this invests in your company? You know what clients look on you? They're watching how you're handling a crisis. Everybody can walk around and take credit when things are going great. But when mm. there's a crisis, you're like the commander in chief saying, we have a response team, we have a PR. They provide you PR protection, part of the crisis management, to make sure your reputation, like you said before, reputable damage is what you have worked in your entire life, creating a brand. Your reputation is what matters most. So even though there's a cost or a statistics, how much you lose per claim, per something, regaining your reputation is everything. And if you don't have a proper response or showing that you did normal measures to protect yourself, your reputation is down. You yep. should be embarrassed. Really? But what are doing today? protection to be proactive and God forbid when something happens you have the full reactive team having a full response in terms of legality legal representation PR or PR management crisis management everything in a way even if it's a negative situation you bring out a super positive power by your company in terms of marketing to regain strong trust to show how you manage when a crisis hits and that's yeah. why it is and that's why you don't hear about it daily because these people that got hacked i get personally calls from big big companies very professional companies and i was shocked i didn't ask them like you don't have a, i have a client made a really big um cyber liability package after he got a, a, a hack but he woke up like on a sunday in the middle of a weekend he said eh, 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 nobody hates monday morning emergencies you can have them on the weekend when it when it's nice and cozy and he yeah. calls me up what can I do now? You're a little late now, but um, I think you should stop the bleeding and call these these people. But what you should do for the future, X, Y, and Z. So I had a meeting with the CFO, everything that week, and we put things into place. But what I'm trying to explain, why wait to get on that phone, knowing that you can do everything you write today to have a full crisis management when something does happen, and you need to continue.
All right. Thank you, Chaim. Also, very, very fantastic points, great energy, and, uh, and great stories to kind of bring it home. Um, other, other reasons why you don't hear more about this is because, it's, again, this is really kind of going in circles here, but it's, it's horrible PR. You know, do you really want your clients and your patients to know the information was accessed? It's, it's, you clean up, it's difficult to clean up the, the, that mess. And then there's legal ramifications, there's fines, there's lawsuits, legal fees can be significant. So, so, so many incidents go unreported. So, the, the key point here that I bring home is that just because you aren't that worried about the information being stolen, doesn't mean your customer's information and privacy is any less valuable to them. Okay. Okay. What you're doing to be good, good is to the information. And I, I'm sorry for cutting you, but I made myself notes on this because another very important thing, and we had a great conversation about this before, Yudi, is that even if you're a personal individual, an employee working for someone, or you as a person, get a company owner and somebody who runs a business knows for sure. But you're on a day-to-day -day basis, trust your payroll company with all your and your employees' personal data, your accounting firm, your people working with all your financial services, your attorney, your payment processing company rounds all your clients' data. So what did you yeah. just say? You don't care for yourself. Who are you to take responsibility for others? So my question is, just like a GC, a contractor, knows... Every time a hire hires a sub, he, in order the sub should walk onto the job site, anybody that's related in this industry knows or other different industry where you need to be compliant of their insurance, you need to provide certificate of insurance to show every type of insurance that you have, God forbid if something happens on the site, that you take responsibility and you will be responsible and lawsuits roll in every day on people injuring themselves or goes towards the sub, the GC gets schlepped into the claim, the GC needs to give a certificate for the owner, when you release your most vulnerable information, the, everything down to the social security, everything to, of your information to the payroll company, to all these financial institutions that I mentioned before, all these people that handle really, really information that make them carry a bullseye on their back for hackers, why don't you ask before sending everything via email, whichever way you're sending it, what measures do you have in place, just like a GC asset sub, to protect me? Of cybersecurity, and if something does happen and we get um, a result of a, of losses, in terms of suits, everything is ready to come after them and force them. What do you have in place to protect us and make sure that you will take responsibility and make sure that we are compensated with full financial standing as prior as prior to the loss? Yeah. No. So you, but you're releasing every piece of detail, every shred of detail over to companies based on trust and based on everything. There might be great people, but they might be missing this point. And I'm raising today awareness to make sure that after this conference, you call around all these professionals that you're using and dealing and making sure to diversify your risk. I'm not saying you need to carry the whole responsibility and burden, but if you're sending to a professional company every day, all these data and data is being exchanged on a daily basis, do yourself a favor, ask this question, ask it now, so tomorrow and the vision of your company and everything that you that you want to do later on or whatever you have in plan is properly protected, then you can move on with your day-to-day -day operations. Okay, Kai, let me ask you, I vaguely remember you telling me that you provide some sort, you provide a certain service that will go out and do the research for for the clients, uh, you know, is that accurate or that just make that up? So basically, there's something called like vendor compliance, risk management analysis. So if a company wants a full overall assessment, what we will do is look on their um, basic operations and see where they're up to. And besides of just simply looking on property, liability, so many people call in with questions. Hey, why is EPLI, Employment Practice Liability Insurance? I, have it, I had it three times this week. I think I need it. My friend had it. People are just not educated, not aware on certain things. People want to know. People want to be properly protected. It's not always about price. It's about quality, service, and price. And the proper protection is what they hire people on um, companies like us and like yourself to take care of them, to know that they can focus what they do best while we do what we do best. So there's a lot of nitty-gritty details in terms of vendor compliance. There's a lot of everything is a case-by-case -case basis, but definitely we can do extensive research on a firm if they want us to do it. And when in fact, when somebody enjoys and, and appreciates the knowledge that we bring and the intelligence that our companies bring to their company, 
that's the best business transaction. And we see the companies operating that with that infrastructure, like delegating these tasks and not micromanaging and being the most performing and rapid growing companies out there because they're set up with a much bigger, healthier mindset. They have a bigger vision of where they want to be in life. Absolutely. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this, this presentation real quick, and then we'll kind of wrap up the, the, the webinar as well. But as promised, I'm going to give you three things you can do right now to lower your chances of suffering a cyber breach. Uh, number one is you can implement two-factor authentication on all your accounts. Uh, you may be some of them, some of them, some of you may be familiar with this concept already, or in some some places may be forcing you to do it already. But two-factor authentication is basically it will it's on, on a very basic level. It's going to send you a, a security code to your phone every time you try to log in. So first factor of authentication. What? This two-step verification process, you mean? It's a, yeah, a two-step two verification process. The first step of verification is something you know, which is your username and password. And the second verification is something you have, which is your cell phone. Two people can't have the same cell phone. Only one person can have it. So that's the two-factor authentication. There is a third factor, which I can't wait for that to happen, is something you are. So the fingerprint or a retina scanner, but we're not there yet. Um, so that is going to be just, just implementing two-factor authentication will give you a huge leg up in, in protection. And number two is don't reuse the same passwords everywhere. People have, people have a very bad habit of they'll go and create, they'll, they'll have three major passwords they use. One password for their banking, and then that's a very secure password. And then they have another password for important, less important stuff, but still, still important. Maybe their car lease or their iTunes account or some other stuff. Uh, and then they have a junk password they use everywhere else, every single website. Now people are going to say, you know, how am I going to remember it? Mean, I can't, I can't change my password. I and mean, I have a difficult time remembering it as is. And my recommendation is that you use a password manager. Uh, I personally, I, 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 I don't know any of my passwords. I mean, maybe me three, four passwords. That, that's it. Everything else is completely random gibberish passwords, 16 character generated password. Um, and it's saved in the password manager. The one that I use that I can personally vouch for is LastPass. Uh, they have free accounts and paid accounts. The free account is just fine. Uh, it builds, it integrates into, um, into your web browser. So it automatically calculate and capture those passwords as you type them in. It has a beautiful mobile app for the cell phone also. So it completely integrates in the cell phone as you're browsing, um, as you're browsing the different websites. It will automatically inject those credentials. Now, I want to also mention a point about getting hacked. People think getting hacked, uh, hacking means different things. Uh, but the, the conception people people think about hacking is massive code flying through the screen and somebody's like bombarding your systems until they finally crack through. Yes, that, that's definitely one method of hacking. I'm not going to dispute that. But the more common ways of hacking is when people simply walk through the front door with the correct key. I mean, and I was speaking to Chaim about this before. Hacking means gaining unauthorized access. Now, people's Gmail accounts get hacked all the time. People's Facebook accounts, people's bank accounts get hacked. It's not because Chase got hacked. But the calm access with and a place where they shouldn't be or you don't want them to be, but they calm themselves themselves in on unauthorized access. They're physically in with your keys with unauthorized permission through the front door or through the side door. That's usually in a professional hacker. And adding this point, statistics shows that average a professional intelligent hacker will sit and grow and, and live in your system probably 180 days snooping mm -hmm. around before literally pulls the plugs. And I'm talking about professional hackers that manage to make insurance companies or yourself pay them heavy duty ransoms, a couple of hundred thousand dollars to get back your data or get back up and running. I'm literally talking, these numbers are being paid out. So continue. Yeah, absolutely. So just to finish up what I was saying before is that, um, you know, of course, Google suffers a breach. My, you know, Chase suffered a breach. 80 million records were exposed those a few years ago. But that happens very far and few in between. But we hear that people's Gmail accounts get hacked all the time. People accounts apologize. Oops, I'm sorry. Don't even don't open the email that was sent to you three days ago. Uh, you know, people are like, you know, way past that already. But the way, the way that that happens is because people use the same passwords everywhere. And the password ends up on the dark web. And the first thing these hackers do 
is they try to unlock a bunch of different places with your email address, which is in most cases the username, and they try your password, and uh, and more times than not they get in. So my recommendation and is to really use different passwords everywhere you go. Save it in the password manager so it doesn't have to take up space in your brain. And if you have to come up with a memorable password, chances are it's not safe and it's not secure. And the third one is kind of a cryptic, third point, is kind of a cryptic point is make sure you're protected. So go out and get yourself an antivirus, even if it's a you know a basic antivirus, you, you'll you'll be surprised. What I'm saying is like this: we, we audited uh, a number of IT environments, and we came up across on a recent on a recent audit, we ran um, our penetration a mini a penetration test, and the antivirus didn't say a thing. The antivirus just no alerts, didn't stop us, nothing. And when we investigated this some more, we found out that the IT company, the previous IT company, had disabled the antivirus because it was making too much noise and it was creating too many alerts for them to deal with. So they went and disabled the antivirus completely, which is crazy. You, you, you have an IT company, you hire an IT company to come in and, and do that and protect you, and they go ahead and they, and they disable the antivirus because they, they couldn't handle their own promises. Now, like taking I, I, I'm sorry? Like taking away your antibodies. The antibodies, yeah, go ahead. So, so I mean, you know, you, you may. I, I encourage everyone to get a, a penetration test for the for the network, and the main and the main reason why many people don't is because it's very expensive. Um, and I'd like to offer this to you guys as a free get free giveaway, uh, a, a free mini network penetration test. It's worth $9.97. I mean, usually, if somebody if somebody calls us to come do this for them, this is what we charge. Uh, and this will this will reveal just how secure your network is. Okay, people think that oh, I'm paying for backups. I'm paying for an IT guy. I'm paying for an IT company. I'm paying. I'm paying. I'm paying. I see it on my credit card. I must be okay. This test will reveal exactly how okay you are. Um, yeah. It's a quick. But in order to qualify for this, in order to qualify for this. You need to have at least five or more computers in your office. You know, if this is a one-man, two-man operation, cybersecurity is still important. But to, you know, this is going to be an extensive test, and and um, you need to have at least five or more computers in your office. You need to email testmynetwork at compuconnect.it. It's up on the screen for you if, if I said it too quickly. But you want to email testmynetwork at compuconnect.it to request it. And you need to be one of the first five people to reach out as we're only giving away five of them. I'm not giving it away to everybody. It takes a lot of time. It's a, uh, it's a pretty advanced test. We need to put together all that data after the scan. So again, you need to have five computers. You need to email test to my network at compuconnect.it, not .com, it's .it. And you need to be one of the first five people to reach out to get this. To get this. Otherwise, thank you so much for your time. And I want to I'm end the I promise I'll share with you a couple of stories, um, just scenarios to walk you through, to give you an idea of what a cyber crime looks like and um, how reactive measures already comes into place. Everything that TD explained is in what I totally agree with. And in fact, it's very important to properly protect yourself, to be proactive. But when it comes to a situation, like I said before, to properly be reactive and a full crisis management, um, I'll tell you just a few stories just to give you an idea where uh, cyber security and a cyber liability policy takes good care of you and your company and knowing that you can rest calm and easily that uh, that you're being properly handled in situations that nobody wants to be in. So there's a lot of crimes that happen and it's simple, small cyber, um, cyber breaches that were happening and we were able to properly eliminate the hack, take care of it without needing to pay out the ransom. They outsmarted the, the, the criminals because they were like not such great crooks and our intelligent teams were even better than them and they got through to them and they eliminated everything and everything back accordingly. Everything was well said. These are smaller things. Um, a recent story that really is with me still and was a great accomplishment in terms of cyber liability is something where we do a lot of social service, government programs, government accounts, yeshiva, schools, um, a lot of institutions, we have a special division that runs that. And we took over in 2019 an account 
where we weaved in, we've done all their insurances. They have probably 26 locations throughout New York City alone. And they're a big government program with social service specializing for younger children with special needs. We've done everything. Part of our uh, proposal was we added them to have a good cyber liability policy. We told them it's important. I remember as of today, sitting in the director's office and offering it to him. And he says, we have a great IT company. I don't see this to be necessary. It's just an additional expense. Explain them why. He told me, listen, I'm busy. You have done such a great job for us. So I'll take your opinion. I'll add it on. I'll add it on. But it's because you said so. It's not, it's not something I think. You know. And a short while later, COVID-19 happened, we moved on to 2020. We think it was throughout the period of COVID-19 and that, that's because of the server, whatever, around that time, they got breached with a huge hack and they were extortioning them with threatening to expose all these little kids' data on the dark web, which would be a huge problem for was the parents, everybody but these kids. But the reason that these these criminals were like knowing what they're doing, because if the this is a government program and they're compliant with a lot of government rules, and if the government gets hold of this and by the next audit, or they will be audited immediately, why didn't you do X, Y, and Z in place? Why didn't you have cyber liability? It's your job to make sure that these kids are protected. It's a normal thing. A lot of I'm a lot of professional industries these days, before it even was required, we have cyber liability, we even up our cyber liability, but a lot of uh, certain industries, banking firms need to send in a certificate to the Department, to the Department of Financial Service showing that they have certain measures in place. Like the government would have shut down this program. It's probably over a 20 million grant in, in one borough alone. The government will shut down the program, the director told me, if this, data reaches the dark web, they can probably shut down. No, no question that they may do the most amazing job or they will be removed, somebody else will be brought in, they will be losing everything. Our cyber um, team, immediately after the threat was notified, no matter what time it was, they immediately brought in really intelligent professionals. There was like five huge crews deployed. A legal team immediately notifying the legal actions that yes, we had suffered the crime with the beautiful legal response that we're here to protect you if something does happen of this this is our lawyer's number consultation is provided the PR team properly talking with people coming there now explaining them the process and procedures and the most importantly like I said previously the NSA ex-military team that know from the NSA that know all these technologies were sitting first thing that they do is everybody is a suspect no matter who is involved in the company, the IT companies, the people working in-house, everybody's a suspect till they find out who the, where the threat comes from, who the hacker is. Sometimes it can be people within your organization, people that you hire, number one, that didn't do the best job and they left things open. And then you have people that are nice guys by day and cyber criminals by night. So they need to know, they, can, they consider everyone as a suspect. And they see where the breach comes from. Then they started negotiating with these hackers. It was almost a million dollar ransom. They brought it down to $300,000. They paid out a full $300,000 in ransom. It was negotiated. They were begging them. There was transcripts after the claim, seeing how it went back and forth. They were literally begging. This is a nonprofit organization. So we're doing this for kids. Please give us a better deal. For three hundred thousand dollars, they made sure the data was scrubbed, and we got regained access of our programs. The whole thing took seventy-two hours. Everything was back and running like normal, but it was a big, hectic crisis operations going on behind the scenes. They wow. eliminated the hackers, shut them out, scrubbed all the data, got back no shred of evidence to the end of the dark web. They don't have any more access before they paid it out. They paid it out in bitcoins. That's how it works. And um. After that, all the IT professionals that they had, everybody was able to submit bills to regain access. There was huge bills of fifty, sixty thousand dollars per IT professional that was submitted with an itemized bill. Everybody got paid out by the insurance. So the reason wow. I'm sharing this is incredible this story. This incredible. Me up and said, "You have whatever you're gonna sell me tomorrow. Whatever you have, my trust blindly. 
So number one, I gained trust. Number two, this program was saved. You're talking about a program that's a $20 million grant from the government. And number three, I'm just trying to share with you on how much extensive information and details and teams you need to deploy to properly eliminate such a huge threat within less than 72 hours. So I hope the value that Yidi and I brought to you today brings you some awareness to act on it, like I said today, to the people that you deal with on a smaller scale, which Yidi, Yidi spoke to even to everyday people, how you should set your passwords, things that you can use, which are for free. And then day-to-day -day people, which is also for free, you know, small businesses, just making sure the companies that you're using are, are properly utilizing your data, saving your data, properly protecting your data, what they do, they do with your data, and if they have measures in place and protection in place and coverage in place when something does happen and exposes all your data to the people they don't want to have it, nobody should have it, that that they are probably taking care of you, forgetting about you, you the people, you their customers. And um, number three is which the middle size and the large companies which you have a healthy, successful small business and everybody, which everybody has, it's the same price for everyone based on their scale of operations. You guys are working every single day and you know to protect yourselves about every other thing out there but why not take this in consideration for the biggest threat out there in my opinion one of the biggest threats certain liabilities does happen but cyber liability is something that happens on a daily basis the numbers are going up and the business models are right now switching over from certain manual file cabinets and so much manual things into paperless and data and data and data and data and so on and so forth. So basically, data is all you have, data is what you're based on, and your data should be protected. And um, a lot of small little details that people, you probably know that, you, I just want to add that on, it's a very interesting thing. We're very like um, amateur hackers will do, basically copy your name and send it to your employees, I sent invoices and other brokers shared with me somebody paid out a PO of $300,000 to a hacker with an invoice. Crazy stuff, which it's a $300,000 payment, which it's a $300,000 loss, $50,000, $60,000. I was in a group of a network of professionals throughout the United States. Um, a lot of big brokers, years in the business, old school brokers, they're like fascinated what has been going on. And so a lot of people didn't have coverage, a lot of people do have. And they were properly reimbursed. A lot of hacking, the POs, the emails, copying. So just tell your staff, be careful when the link is open, double check things, be vigilant, be vigilant what's coming into your inbox. You think you're safe, you're sitting at home with your computer. No, like he said the before, everybody, the guns are out of the picture, you're protected. But the cyber criminals, they're coming in nicely to your inbox, nicely, they're calling the ways through. So I hope. We were able to share some value. I believe, in my humble opinion, in my professional opinion, that this is a number one threat to your company, to yourself, if you don't have it today and if you didn't do anything about it. Please, mark my words, take this time of day, do some active measures today, do the max to your ability today to avoid <laughs> confusion and, 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 and big financial laws in the future. Thank you Thank so you. much for having me. Thank you for joining. Thank you all of you for joining. And have a successful rest of your day. And if you have any additional questions, CD um, had a chat box. People were, were able to leave some comments. Maybe we'll do a future series to discuss it later. And our email addresses are yep. available to discuss. And the email that you mentioned with a free giveaway, which is extremely generous and very valuable. It's probably $1,000, just an extensive, the, the five ones. Um, are available. That's five thousand dollars from UD's professional time and services and resources available to you. And um, if you guys have any questions, feel free to email us. We'll make time to do a one-on-one -on -one to properly protect and make the awareness or educate you more or explain a little bit more, elaborate details what you wanted to know. Thank you so much. Okay. We start sharing services, share your vision for a better tomorrow. And UD, give your final words, and we'll all go on with our days. You, you took all my final words. You took all my final words. Thank you all for joining. Thanks for joining and thanks for making time out of your day. Uh, I really, really appreciate it. Uh, if you need any, any like like Chaim mentioned, if you need a one-on-one, -on -one, you want to hear some more details, feel free to reach out. Um, and uh, whoever reached out, I see some people reached out for that um, for that 
for that mini penetration test, uh, and I'm thrilled about that, and I will contact you shortly. Thank you, guys. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.